I have a Facebook friend. He's a stalwart conservative who thrives in Los Angeles. He's also a firearms expert with a radio show about shooting. He posted a slightly conspiratorial video the other day about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. This is a comment from one of his regulars. Quote, Ukraine was a cesspool that existed primarily to funnel foreign aid money back to Democratic Party oligarchs. There are at least 25 biolabs funded by the U.S. and Ukraine working on gain of function with lethal pathogens, something that is illegal in the United States. There was never a chance Ukraine was going to join NATO. Ukraine helped make the Biden family rich. War sucks, but there is not a damned thing in Ukraine worth one drop of American blood or treasure. Close quote. Got that? Ukraine, a country of 44 million people, is just a shell game to make Democrats rich. Move along, folks. Nothing here to see. I'll talk about the biolab theory later, but for the moment, I'd like to comment on why some conservatives want to see Ukraine as worse than Putin. Let's be frank. Trump did lean a little bit in Putin's direction during his presidency, as did many conservatives. And I think I can break down the why of this in simple terms. Give me five minutes to hit five points. Number one, the European Union and NATO. Conservatives do not trust the EU. We tend to see the European Union as the consolidation of progressive thinking in Western Europe and of the march towards socialism. In addition, we've watched as immigration policies have changed European demographics drastically. Western Europeans are reproducing well below the replacement rate while immigrants from non-European countries are reproducing well above the replacement rate. This isn't a color issue, it's a culture issue. The homelands of our grandparents seem to have given up. Soon Europe as we know it will be gone. And what is NATO these days but a defense organ of the European Union? Putin symbolizes resistance to both NATO and the EU. Number two, Christianity. It's one of the wonders of the world that Southern evangelicals have embraced a Manhattan real estate tycoon with a checkered past as one of their own. I think this just shows how deeply frightened they are of losing a life so centered on traditional Christian values. At least Trump acknowledges the struggle. I recently watched a string of interviews with people who joined the trucker convoy across the U.S. They compulsively tried to link Jesus to liberty and to the flag. Christianity among this type of conservatives is simply a given. To your average consumer of AM talk radio, Jesus is the ultimate founding father. Russian Orthodox Christianity is perceived by many to be the last European bastion of old school family values. One man, one woman, multiple children. Again, Putin is seen to be holding the line. Number three, alpha troll energy. If I'm honest about why I voted for Donald Trump in 2016, I'd have to admit that it was largely his political incorrectness. In LA, speech codes had been at straitjacket levels for many years. Public figures were always apologizing to one victim group or another. Even comedians were being censured for irreverent jokes. As social media became more dominant, a series of alpha trolls arrived like liberators. People who just said whatever they wanted to say, from Milo Yiannopoulos to Candace Owens to Jordan Peterson. We were grateful to the provocateurs who sent shockwaves through the left. Trump took that attitude into the presidential race and we conservatives ate it up. He said whatever the hell was on his mind and damned the torpedoes. No ass kissing, no apologies. Putin seems to embody that as well. He's a guy who just does not care what the other European leaders think is proper. So even though Trump and Putin were often at political odds, they seem to kind of get one another. Number four, male dominance hierarchy. There is something in the conservative mind that is drawn to hierarchical male dominated society. As fond as they are of Jesus, it's God the Father who really rocks their world. An all-knowing, all-seeing entity controlling human affairs in such mysterious ways that we don't even need to think about it. This is reflected in the great love that conservatives have for the military, where the pecking order is clear and orders are not up for debate. Trump's flag-waving disciples have handed their leader an ultimate form of authority. The Republican Party, for them, belongs to Donald Trump. 
These folks have lost interest in the customs and institutions of American civic life. They want the big blonde guy in the red tie to take the government back by force. Kind of like Putin took Russia as his personal kingdom. Trump's most faithful acolytes seem to want a dictator. As long as that dictator is owning the libs and dragging the country back from the socialist abyss. And finally, number five, tit for tat American politics. When Trump won in 2016, it was a catastrophe for Democrats. They were so invested in identity politics and victimology that the idea of Trump blurting out his thoughts on the world stage made them physically ill. They could not accept that their own overreach explained Trump. It had to be something else. Everybody knew that Russian bot farms had tried to muddy our political waters. So Democrats ran with that. Trump must be a plant put in office by Vladimir Putin. Every day for a year, Adam Schiff and others tried to merge Trump and Putin into one thing, an evil two-headed monster. Trump, being an alpha troll, gave them plenty to work with. Those of us who defended Trump were seen to be defending Putin as well, and the line became very blurry. When Russiagate went belly up, Trump was then accused of trying to bully Putin's nemesis, President Zelensky, into giving him dirt on Joe Biden, Trump's nemesis. Run this all through the partisan conspiracy blender and a lot of conservatives find themselves siding with Putin and against Zelensky. The Facebook comment I read to you is the kind of nasty cooked down partisan soup that's been the staple diet on both sides of the Donald Trump phenomenon for years. Just flat out hatred of one's fellow Americans across the political divide. I don't think that even the hardest, most contrarian right-wingers really want Putin to win just so that Biden and his EU buddies will look bad. But their knee-jerk habit of opposing everything that Democrats support has them in an emotional quandary, and they end up online amplifying ideas that may very well have come from Putin's own propaganda team. So there we have it. Five reasons that some conservatives favor Putin. Thanks for listening. Feel free to share. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and then click the little bell to get notifications.